Hello, everybody. Welcome to the new day God has given us. I'm recording this from Vancouver Island. <clears throat> Just spent a day speaking to students, faculty, staff members at Vancouver Island University. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk about determination. Determination for everybody who is listening to us, uh, because many of you have asked to talk about resilience, determination, and rising, relationship, business, management, leadership. We've brought you several episodes on different topics. We brought you experts in different uh, areas. But today, let's talk about determination. Determination. You have to be determined beyond expectation. And that expectation I'm talking about is expectation from you as a person. When I was a young boy, I would tell you stories from Yaka village. I am a young boy, four and a half years old. My father, who had five, and mother, who had five children, were struggling to send all five children to school. So what they would do, they would save money, pay for one, pay for a second one, and so my dad tried to delay me from going to school. At four and a half years old, I would wake up and see my sisters, Faida, Christine, and Babazi, put on their uniforms, green uniforms, and go to school. Next morning, the same. I'm staying home with mom. My cousin who didn't, who used to come and mom babysat her. We didn't call it babysitting. Mom watched her would come and say, I don't want to pray with boys. She wanted mom to find the girls or pray with mom while mom was digging. But determination story here ties in, guys, because, ladies and gentlemen, as a four-year-old, four and a half, I was determined to go to school so bad that every morning I started sneaking out of the house to follow my sisters as they go to school. Sitra goes to school at children's book I've written partly is a story about my following my sisters to go to school. Here I was, young boy, determined I was going to get education no matter the circumstances. So I would wake up in the morning, sneak through as my sisters are getting ready and follow them to go to school. Those of you who know Nyakajezi, at the time they were going to Nyakasozi Primary School. Walk from Nyakajezi to Nyakasozi Primary School, you have to cross Kashasha River. Now it is just a small stream, but it used to be a roaring river with lots of water coming through. And this was a rainy season around the time this is happening. I'm following my sisters, go to school. Another day, they caught me after Kayenje Town, which is uh, maybe half a mile. They catch me, bring me back home. Anyone who saw me brought me back. But this one day I woke up and I was determined I was going to make it to school. I wake up, walk, hiding in banana plantations, hiding in the coffee plantations. They look back, I look, they run, I run. We go, we go, we go close at Kashasha. Kashasha River was filled with water. The small sticks that you cross on in Ruchiga called Emigogo were covered, but my sisters knew how to cross because they could feel with their feet, they were older, and they crossed very fast and well. When I got there, I didn't know where the sticks were. I'm trying to stick in my foot and I fell in the water. Water swept me down and I didn't know how to swim by the instincts of a child. Bo -bo 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 -bo, walk and crossed. Forward, 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 forward. It was like a marathon running. But eventually I go to school. I get there, look at everybody who was wearing a uniform, khaki pants and white shirt. Here I am. I don't have a uniform. I don't fit in. So I decided I was going to go down and look into the classroom through the window. That's exactly what I did. I stood in the window. I'm looking inside. And next thing I hear is my father, Eric Kaguri, standing behind me, his hands closed. Twice J. Jackson Kaguri. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when my dad called you three names, you were in trouble. And I knew now I'm going to get a spanking. Oh, what is he going to do? He starts walking. I follow him. Please beat me. Please do whatever you want to do. And he runs and walks, 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 walks. I have just walked what sounded like a whole marathon. And now I'm walking back, following him to go get my punishment. When we got home, my dad agreed with mom that they were going to send me to school on a condition that if I ever fail an exam, I'll be, I will never go back to school. And ladies and gentlemen, at four and a half years old, I signed an agreement with my father, oral agreement. If I fail an exam, I won't go back to school. And next day he went and got my favorite goat and sold it so I can get school fees to go to school. That's how my school started in 19. 74 and a half. Four and a half years, I started school. The semester ended, a term, we call them in Uganda. I was, I passed my exam. I brought my report, gave it to my father. Instead of going, hey, where to go, son, you did it. He looked at it and go, ha. In his head, I'm going to pay another tuition for this young man to continue going to school. Since that day, ladies and gentlemen, I have not failed an exam in my entire life. I was determined to stay in school that I work so hard and pass my exam. Number two, I was determined to prove my father wrong. No man of you have talked to many of you. Many of you have father issues. I do have father issues. I've had them for a long time. I go to point where I forgave my father, Eric Kaguri. We are now cool with each other. We tolerate each other. He's getting older. I'm getting older. I have children. I can see things from his perspective. I've done a lot of uh, therapy and I've done a lot of counseling. So, Zay Kaguri, we are cool. But at that time, I was determined to prove him wrong. I was determined to stay in school. And I stayed in school. I finished my education in primary, secondary, walked back and forth, finished my education, attended St. Charles, attended Kamboga Secondary School. High school, still the same. I would walk to Chinchiz High School, back and forth, carrying my mattress. My sister was at Chihihi College. We would carry her mattress and go all the way to Chihihi and back. Many of you from Kanungu know these places. I was determined, and to this day, ladies and gentlemen, that determination still carries me. Makere University determined, Columbia University determined, Indiana University determined, working at Michigan State University determined, starting in Yaka determined, I am still a determined guy. A man raised by parents who can't read books have written seven books, ladies and gentlemen, determination. A man raised without ever knowing any financial literacy. I have pulled myself from scratch to learning how to save money. I am determined. Divorced twice traumatic experiences for any man and for any children. I've done my work, went into therapy, went into counseling, still determined to live and raise children regardless of circumstances. Three PhDs later, honorary PhDs, I'm still determined. Man raised by people who couldn't read in a area that there is no clean water, determined and brought clean water, built libraries so others can also have a level where they can do things they have to do. Determination, ladies and gentlemen, is huge, but all comes from you, from within. You can be broken down by just simple things, by a bad message, by somebody talking about you, but you have to be determined to succeed, determined to work hard, regardless the circumstances you are facing. Right now, when people see me recording from Vancouver, recording from Los Angeles, recording from New York, 
on the plane, they think, oh, it is so easy. It is determination to succeed. Yesterday, I traveled for 14 hours, 6 a.m. in Michigan, drive an hour and a half to Detroit, get on a plane, get to Seattle, wait for three hours, get on another plane to Vancouver, wait, get on a sea plane, wait. I was determined when I arrived, Professor Graham Pike, who picked me up, said I had given up that you would make it because the weather was bad. This determination is what the Bible talks about, that God helps those who help themselves. If you don't put in your work, things are not just going to bust out of heaven and fall. I pray and I'm also determined. When I make an application somewhere to do something, I am determined to succeed. I want it as bad as I want to breathe. Eric Thomas a hip hop preacher said that, wrote a successful book. He's determined to succeed every single day that when he puts out a video, 20,000 people watch it within 10 minutes. Puts out a book, boom, book. He's determined to succeed. His team is determined to succeed. You lack determination, you're not going to achieve anything. So ladies and gentlemen, today I'm talking about determination. I am believing in you. I know you can do it. If I did it, you have the power and you need the determination to continue succeeding. Watch, subscribe, share, and reshare. Then comment so we can know what topics we need to bring you. But the nuggets of wisdom will continue coming. My commitment on this channel is to share knowledge, bring other people who will share knowledge with you so you don't have to go through the same traps, the same pitfalls I have gone through. I created a path through Nyaka, 21 years of digging, making the road, Tamak Road now, that we, our children are able to walk through into their success journeys. I didn't have that journey, but I have created it. I was determined to get it done. More are still coming. You can do it. I believe in you. God is good. The best is yet to come.